Good evening. Tonight we have seven true stories where people encountered evil. This happened many years ago when I was 12 years old. It was the 1990s and my brothers and I decided to go on our bikes and go to the local playground. Those were the days when parents left us to our own devices, so not many parents, if any, were there at the park that day. We dumped our bikes and ran over to join the other kids. I got on the whirly merry-go-round and there were other children on board, girls and boys. A man came out of nowhere and I assumed that he was one of the other parents. I remember his creepy comb-over, thin moustache and wrinkled clothes. He pushed us around and we all laughed, but I noticed that whenever I came around to him, he grabbed me by the hips and squeezed as he pushed us faster and faster. He kept his eyes trained on me and I knew that he was a dangerous pervert. I instinctively got off and went to the wooden playhouse. I climbed up the ladder and played with the other children, even though I was a little older. The man followed and went underneath the level we were on. I realised that he was looking up through the slats of the wooden floor, looking up our skirts. Again, I escaped and ran over to my brothers. I told them about the man and the other kids overheard and agreed that he was a pervert. We all ended up yelling at him and saying that we were going to call the cops. It was funny to see him run off, but as we left to go home, my brothers pointed to a tree where the man was climbing up after a young boy. We yelled out again, but he ignored us. The boy in the tree was climbing higher and higher to get away from him. As soon as we got home, we told our parents and they called the cops. We never heard about him again, but I'll never forget that evil look in his nasty, nasty eyes. This is my true story. When I was in high school, I went out with a possessive guy for about three months. He was so jealous and had to know everything I did, everywhere I went and with who. One time I said some silly comment and he actually tried to choke me. That was enough for me. I ended it straight away. I soon forgot about him and grew up into a successful young woman with my own home and huge St. Bernard who weighed over £220. It was nine years after the incident with the choking and I was blissfully single. All of a sudden I started getting messages from my ex on Facebook asking who I was. He wanted to take me out to dinner and went on about how he missed me and hadn't stopped thinking about me. Trying to be polite, I declined and ended up having to be quite firm about it. He was relentless and started sending messages two to three times per day. I ended up ignoring him completely. It got worse and worse, just like the old days. He ended up sending at least 10 messages a day, so I had to block him. After that, I pushed him out of my mind and went on with living my life. Then, things got intense. He managed to get my phone number and started texting me over 20 times per day. The messages were creepy and it became obvious that he was stalking me in person. He said that he would saw me in my yard and I looked good, adding that he always got his way, no matter what. I was scared and annoyed over the fact that he knew where I lived and didn't know how he found out where I was at. At 23 years of age, I didn't have a house phone, just my cell phone. It came to my head the night I woke up with my dog on top of me, shaking and shuddering. He was staring out of the bedroom window with a slight snarl on his frightened face. I couldn't believe it when I saw my ex staring straight back at me. He then took off as I called the police and luckily for me, they arrived within two minutes. They looked around and found many cigarette butts under the window. What was worse and disgusting? was that there was also semen on the ground. The police were able to match his DNA due to him having been found guilty of a rape in another country. Apparently he'd also served time for his crimes. I was so proud of my dog, 
sergeant who had protected me that night. If it wasn't for him, I could have been raped or worse if he hadn't been there. Sadly, he was hit by a car and died two months later. I'll never forget him, but I did get a new dog, who was a protective dog trained by the police. Both dogs are very dear to me and always will be. I hope I never see that freak again. Being typical students living on campus, me and my roommate thought it would be fun staying in an old dorm. For the first couple of months, everything was great. But a couple of weeks ago, our lights started flickering out without warning, which was so annoying and creepy. It was more annoying when we couldn't put in a request for maintenance to come and fix the lights because of some kind of glitch with the website. Finally, last night, we bundled up with a load of blankets to keep warm. I have no problem getting to sleep and I am a lucid dreamer, so I wake up easily. Later in the night, I woke up hearing yelling from the hallway. It was my roommate and she was freaking out about the fact that our key wasn't working and she screamed about needing to get into the room as soon as possible. I staggered to the door and before I reached it, I saw her back in bed sleeping. I didn't think much of it and decided to go back to sleep, believing that I had dreamed it all. When I got into bed, I checked my roommate again. She was still asleep in her bed, but I was distracted by a shadow which appeared under the door. I bent down and saw Boots standing directly at the other side of the door. At first, I was relieved when I saw the Boots walking away and then I heard the door of the stairwell opening. Seeing all the lights weren't working, I turned my lamp on huddled under the covers for about an hour, creeped out and wondering if the person wearing the Boots would come back. No one can get into the girls' floor without a student card and security is strict about locking up at midnight, so there's no way it was one of us. The only thing I could think of was that the homeless people sometimes camp out in the basements and the boots were definitely men's, which is even creepier, I suppose. This happened years ago when I was house-sitting for a friend. I had been at our house many times growing up and when her mother passed away, she inherited it. I never liked her mother because she was one of those nasty women who thinks that no one's good enough for their kids, even friends. She was even harder on me because I excelled at school and received higher grades. My friend never cared as we were close friends who didn't care about that kind of crap. I can't say that I was too upset when her mother passed away, but I was there for her and understood that it was a terrible thing to go through. I never really believed in ghosts or the paranormal, so I didn't think twice when I stood on the front porch and waved goodbye to my friend and her boyfriend. They were going on a trip to New York for a week to visit his father. It had been nearly three years since her mother passed away. From the first night, I felt like I was being watched. I kept getting the same vibe I used to get when I visited over the past years. It was like a mixture of a scorn and loathing coming from the laser red eyes. The first incident happened in the bathroom, of all places. On my way out of the door, I felt something fall on my back. It rolled down me and it felt like someone threw a roll of toilet paper at my head and then rolling down my back. I spun around but nothing and no one was there, so I shrugged it off and left the room. Then I started making a sandwich in the kitchen and heard shuffling behind me. What was freaky about it was that my friend's mother used to shuffle around wearing fluffy slippers. My blood ran cold. I turned that way but couldn't see anyone. The next day I was in the garden having a cigarette with my cup of coffee. All of a sudden I heard a guff whisper in my ear. Loser. I squealed because the voice sounded exactly like my friend's mother. I started losing my temper so I yelled out, Too bad! Deal with it! When I walked back inside, I could have sworn I heard footsteps behind me. When I called my friend and told her about it, she laughed. She told me to act like there was no one there, because her mother hated being ignored, even by people she didn't like. I was surprised at how calm she was and she told me that she had hunched her mother's spirit was hanging around 
and was sorry that I was copping the brunt of it. For the rest of the week I did my best to ignore the activity. It was mostly footsteps, whispers and doors creaking, but on the last day, it was like she wanted to send me off with a bang. I was getting the last of my clothes out of the dryer and I got that prickly feeling on the back of my neck. When I turned around I could have sworn that I saw a pair of eyes looking at me from the inside of the cupboard above the dryer. Thinking that it might have been a rodent or something, I pulled the door wide open. The eyes disappeared but a terrible stench hit my nostrils. I freaked when I heard an evil laugh. I was so glad to get out of that house that only times I ever visit is when my friend is there. No more house sitting. This is a true story about my brother and Christia, his ex-girlfriend. Back then we all lived together in my parents' home and my brother wanted to save money so they could move into a place of their own, after some financial difficulty. Christia had paranormal skills which she'd had since childhood. Even though it was obvious that things were going to change once they moved in, I knew that those things weren't for the best, seeing as the energy was, um, darker. What was even more frightening was that it seemed like someone or something was always watching from the shadows. It was worse at night. Every time I saw Christia, whether it be bumping into her in the hallway or seeing her walk into a room, I always got a creepy feeling. I don't know if it was because of her telling me beforehand about her skills, but she definitely had a strange aura or a mysterious atmosphere around her. The incident occurred after my brother finished playing his Xbox Kinect, which projects green dots everywhere. He fell asleep and when he woke up later on, he saw a creepy reflection on the TV screen. The thing was, the Xbox Kinect registered the dark figure who was standing at the end of his bed. He freaked when the figure walked over and stood right next to him on the other side of the bed. When Krista woke up, it disappeared. When my brother told me what happened, I decided to keep the light on. I was so glad when they finally moved away to Ohio, especially Krista. I believed was the cause of it. I am convinced that she was responsible for manifesting the dark figures, as she was always a little creepy and she admitted that she saw things not of this world. Even though I was open to paranormal things, that event and others proved to be too much for me, like a continuous nightmare. Back when I was 21, I had a car that was about to die for real, so my boyfriend at the time took me car shopping. I've never been all that excited about cars so I didn't really care what it was, as long as it was reliable and cheap. We went to the next town to a used car dealership. I told the dealer what I wanted and the first car he showed us was a black two-door Honda. For some reason my boyfriend was excited about it but the car gave me the creeps. He really wanted to take it for a test drive so he talked me into it seeing as I was young and dumb and eager to please him. The car dealer got in the passenger seat while my boyfriend got in the back. I got in the driver's seat and took my time starting it up. When we were on the road, I asked if the car was cheap because of the fact that it didn't have a stereo, but my boyfriend interrupted and said that he could get me a good deal on a stereo. When I stopped the red light, I saw all the windows were tinted apart from the driver's. The dealer made out like he had no idea why the driver's window was the only one not tinted. Then all of a sudden I got a severe pain in my head. It got so bad that I thought I was going to be sick. It didn't take me long to know that the car wasn't for me. When I got to the next set of lights I made an illegal U-turn and raced back to the dealership. My boyfriend was pissed and once we got there I couldn't wait to get out of the car. I was amazed at how much better I felt once I was out of the car. I was angry when I heard my boyfriend trying to strike up a deal so I screamed no, I'm not buying that car. I then asked the dealer why it was so cheap and wanted to know if it had been involved in a car accident. This was my hunch at the time and fair enough I was right. He finally caved and admitted that the previous owner was a 17 year old guy who had been a victim of a carjacking. He received a gunshot wound in the head and died. 
They shot him right through the driver's window and then stole the stereo and the speakers. Needless to say, I did not buy the car. When I was a child, we lived in a house that was bungalow style and the dining room was separated by a hallway which had two rooms opposite each other. I was relaxing in front of the TV in one of the bedrooms, but soon found myself bored with the programme so I switched it off. Picking up a magazine and enjoying the articles on horror tales, I was having a wonderful time immersing myself in the stories rather than boring myself with the news on TV. It wasn't until I finished reading when I began to hear footsteps in the hallway. I felt the hairs prick up on the back of my neck. The fear was not only due to the sense of foreboding running through my body, it was the fact that the footsteps were unknown to me. I knew the sounds of my family coming and going, so it was instantly apparent to me that someone else was walking down the hall, or worse, something else. My heart started pounding while I strained my eyes and ears. The heavy thud of the approaching footsteps suddenly diverted and changed into running in circles up and down the hallway. This went on for a while, and I decided to try and wake my niece, but she wouldn't wake up. All on my own, I began to tremble. I went over to the door and quickly raced to the end of the hallway where the dining room was. I was relieved to see my other niece there watching TV with her maid while my father was cooking. Shaking, I asked my niece if she was the one running around the hallway. At six years of age, she was innocent and sweet. She shook her head with wide eyes. The maid responded with a strange look on her face, telling me that she, telling me that they had been watching TV the whole time. I went over to my father and asked him if he'd heard anything. He looked puzzled and he shook his head also. He told me that I probably imagined it, but I was sure that I'd heard the footsteps loud and clear. Then he laughed and said, Maybe one of your friends is paying a visit. I was shocked that he was so flippant because I was scared out of my wits. When he told me next was amazing. He said that our house was a rice field many, many years ago. Apparently the Spaniards had killed people there and buried their remains on the property. He said that those footsteps could have been one of the other victims trying to escape or the killer, which didn't alleviate my fear although it did explain what happened. Thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Tell me which story you enjoyed the most. And as always, if you're new, subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.